and bows. I'm Jennifer of Custom Chic and if you're new here, welcome. I focus on travel, fashion, and just overall lifestyle and today you're in for a special treat because even though the coronavirus canceled my plans to go to Cabo, I still have some good news. Besides the fact that I'm wearing this phenomenal dress, I'm gonna do a quick little spin by Soulless London, these phenomenal earrings by Lili Sadohi. We're still gonna talk about weddings. Wedding guest 101, what to wear to a wedding, what not to wear to a wedding, and maybe some other wedding tidbits. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, real quick, these earrings are from Bobble Bar. I just changed them up really quickly so that you guys can get some other opinions. I bought these at Ross. Um, you couldn't find them on the Bobble Bar website, but they're not there anymore. But I did find them at Ross and they were, they were, hmm. oh, they were $8.99. Like, $8.99, you can't go wrong. And then these are my super fancy earrings from the Lili Sadohi line. And these were a little bit more pricey, so I try to give you guys two options so that you can kind of figure out what you wanted to wear if you had on a dress that had this much color. I purchased these earrings and these earrings because they were versatile. I could wear this with any other dress that I wanted. Um, not just the fact that they were green, but because they're multicolored, I can get my cost per wear and I can use them for totally everything. All right guys, I don't have any sand, so this carpet, that one right there, that gray one, yep, I'm just gonna sink my toes in it and pretend that I am in Cabo. What I wanna do right now is kinda go through some invitations and just talk about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate for certain weddings, so let's get to I have it. some friends who have been super nice enough, they own Royal Event Services, check them out if you're getting married, and um, they were kind enough to give me some invitations from past weddings so I'm not gonna be putting up anybody's information for an upcoming wedding not only would that be tacky that'd be weird because somebody inevitably would try to attend the wedding which is which is weird it's weird do I still have on two sets no I don't okay um I was just making sure I didn't still have on two different earrings because I showed you guys two different pairs of earrings but anyway here we go so um the wedding invite, why do I wanna talk about the wedding invite? That is your holy grail. It is going to set the entire tone for what you should wear. And some invites actually have like the couple's website on there. I'm not gonna go on these couple's websites, so obviously I don't want to infringe on their privacy, but I wanted to have different ones so that I can show you guys. People spend a lot of money on their invites. Like look at this one, look how pretty this one is. It's all like loose sight and it's very like modern. Um, there's a lot of helpful information on here, so if you're not paying attention to that, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're kind of, it's kind of rude for your host because they want you to be part of their big day, they want you to be part of the celebration, so make sure you pay attention. There's a lot of information in that invite. Look at this next one, like super cute. They did like this magazine sort of, um, let me move up so you guys can see it. Um, they did sort of like this magazine cover and it tells you right here the dress code. It says it's an all white wedding. Look at that. Who knew the invite would have given you some clue as to what to wear? Because sometimes when I show up at weddings, I feel like I got a different invite from other people because I'm like, she is completely dressed like this is a casual wedding and I'm over here decked out in formal. Now, I will probably always go over the top. Not to the point where I'm trying to like compete with the bride or the bridal party, but to me, less is more. That doesn't really apply in clothes. Maybe in like accessories, but not really in like a look. How you like present yourself. I don't I don't believe that. And if you know me, you know that's to be true. Like I'm gonna dress up. But anyway, that's not the here nor there. What I'm saying is that the invite will give you all the information that you need. It'll give you a feel for what the wedding is gonna be like. It should have like um some inspiration as to the color. 
like the bride is obviously dressed in all white that's not abnormal but then when you start reading the invite it says all white wedding well that's perfect now you know what the dress code is now all white doesn't mean anything white goes but we'll we'll talk about a little bit of that later um this invite is pretty standard but i picked this invite because um there's a theme it's like a great gatsby theme so okay obviously this is going to lead you to believe that black and gold are probably going to be the wedding colors right so make sure you look at the invite to see whether or not you should be paying attention to that whether or not black and gold is prohibited or allowed for the guests all this information right here right here let's say let's see what does it say let's say um reception and dancing to follow and it is a great gatsby theme so i mean Come on guys, this stuff is super easy. I don't know how people get flustered sometimes at weddings and what to wear. Um, let's see, this one is nice and fancy. It's like got this nice envelope. Not, not that the other invites were not fancy. I'm not knocking anybody's invites, but I just wanted to point this out. This one is really nice. Um, and when I see this already, I'm already thinking that it's going to be something super formal. The invite looks formal. This invitation does not have the actual theme but it does give me a little sense of what the wedding colors are going to be right so it's probably going to be something with the royal blue and some gold accents and if you're getting an invitation more than likely you are friends with either the bride or the groom or a close member of their family so if you don't have all the information that you need on the website it's completely okay to reach out to them and say, hey, can I wear such and such? What is the vibe gonna be? Is there gonna be a theme? Um, sometimes you can't get all of that stuff on the invitation, so couples will then send you to a wedding website, which you should definitely check out, if anything, to sign the guest book, but to learn a little bit more about the bridal party because I don't know about you, but I've been to plenty of weddings and I'm like, who's that? How are they related? Who's that person? But most of that information sometimes about the bridal party is on the website so what you can't find on the website you will be able to find on the invite and vice versa if you can't find the information on the invite it will more than likely be on the invite i'm sorry the website well now i've been talking for five minutes pre-edit so if it's not five minutes when this is finally edited and you're watching it you know that i've done some cuts around the video we're gonna get into these clothes as to why and why not for different weddings and Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Let's try on some clothes. invite and I'm ready to go to a wedding and I have my all white instructions and I got my all white outfit but would I really wear this to a wedding during the day this is probably more nighttime because it clings a little bit more um the back is exposed like if I was to have if this wedding was happening at a church which it wasn't it was happening at a venue I probably would not have worn this dress um I'm feeling already a little uncomfortable because the dress is so tight Obviously, I could go up in size, but the problem is I'm already feeling uncomfortable when I leave home. So please believe that if you go home or if you go to the venue and there's a bunch of like judgy aunts. I don't know if you've ever been to an African wedding, but there's always a judgy aunt at an African wedding. And you show up wearing something that you feel uncomfortable in and you look like you feel uncomfortable in it. Forget it. Like, <laughs> you might not sleep all that night. They're talking about you the whole time, right? The whole entire time. So... Um, while this is all white and I did adhere to the instructions from the couple, I probably would not wear this to the church. Also, it's a little bit short. I mean, it comes up to my knees. If we do the elementary knee test, it fits. Um, maybe if I went up in size, this would work, but nah, this is a strong maybe for me. She's a strong maybe, right? Like, it looks all sexy and stuff, but I... I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Besides the fact that this dress is clearly wrinkled, um, 
it's white, right? I have my invite. My invite says that I should attend an all white wedding. This is not it. This is not what you wear to a wedding. I mean, unless you're gonna get like, I don't know, Serena Williams being about to get married on the tennis court and you wanna wear a skater skirt. Like this just to me doesn't seem like it's appropriate. It kind of feels me a little bit now that I have it on. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> It is, it is, it's working on me right now that I have it on. I'm like, wait a minute, it's not so bad. I just need to iron it and adjust it a little bit. So, okay, I take that back. Mia culpa, I will correct myself. If you're going to a spring wedding and she's asking for all white, this actually can really work. I can see this in a garden. It's super simple. You're not trying to take any attention away from the bride. Um, it's got some button detailing. It's got some ruching, little spaghetti strap. Um, if this was in the springtime, hopefully it is, um, I can probably couple this with a little shawl, give it some color. Let's see. I just grabbed the first shawl that I saw. Not necessarily one that I would wear, but that's what I mean. You know, take it on there. If you're uncomfortable with your being sleeveless, then you can just totally do this. Yeah, I mean, it's a little simple, but again, you're not going for you. You're just going to follow instructions, so I take it back. This this actually does work. And I got it at Ross, so <laughs> can't go wrong there. All right, we, we got it. White wedding, we're good. Moving on. Pants. What about pants? I'm totally, totally, totally a proponent of wearing pants to weddings. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There is no rule against it. Matter of fact, you're probably more comfortable. I just threw on some pants and a white bodysuit um, just to show you guys. The bodysuit obviously is showing um, through my pants, so I wouldn't wear it that way for the dress or for the wedding. I have on white shoes. I don't think I love this much white, but shoes. I don't think I love this much white. I would probably wear a color or I would wear something that's like a neutral color so probably like a black or a nude or a silver or something metallic so just that I'm not <sighs> not wearing all of this white but if you are into pants and you are comfortable with pants and you know the type of pants that you like to wear like obviously I'm wearing a wide leg pant right now but if you like skinny go for it go for it go for it I also realized what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try the clothes on now and then do voiceovers because if you give me a microphone and a camera and some clothes I will talk you guys to death so to speed this up to give you some of your day back even though coronavirus is whatever um I'm just gonna try this on and then do some voiceovers and we'll have fun that way let's go to the next look <laughs> All right, this is the first up in the what was she thinking category. This dress is probably not going to be appropriate for a daytime wedding, a wedding that's at church, a wedding that has too many of those African judgy aunts. Yeah, no, it's not gonna work. The only thing that does work, let me point that out really quickly, is we still have our Lili Sadohi earrings on, so it's working. But as you can see, this I'm pulling up front, I'm tugging on the bottom, and it's a constant war with this dress like you don't want that to happen and then I realized oh these heels are probably too high I wanted to add a note about bringing sandals um to a wedding so that if you're having tons of fun you're able to slip on some comfortable shoes and not miss any of the fun but again this dress is just not it I look uncomfortable so I'm probably going to be uncomfortable while I'm at the wedding and this is probably going to bring more negative attention than it does positive attention so I would steer away from this one. And there she is. Look at this stunner of a dress. That was purchased at Ross, by the way. Yes, they don't call a dress for less for nothing. You'd be surprised at the amount of things that I find at Ross. Anyway, this dress is a polyester material, pairing it again with these Lili Sadohi earrings and this super cute lime green metallic baguette top handle purse just to give it a little bit of a modern vibe. But I like this dress because it's appropriate for daytime. I can see it definitely transitioning well into a cocktail hour and a reception that follows that's probably semi-formal. Um, 
the color is great it's muted but it still stands out that ruching in the middle really brings everything together it's a nice silhouette well it gives me a nice silhouette um i'm really liking this so i walk over to look at the invites to see where i could wear this definitely daytime definitely semi-formal if this was something that was a little bit fancier even depending on the menu i would be completely completely comfortable wearing this and then look, if this was the invite that I got for this wedding, I have no problem wearing this dress. It would totally work. This dress I like because of its versatility. It has ruching on the side, so it allows me to sort of pull the dress lower, make it longer, or higher, make it shorter. It's got an open back, the, the clasp are behind around the neck. Um, so it's very free flowing in the front. It's very comfortable. It's got great material. Again, these same Lili Sadohi earrings. Y'all gonna get tired of them. I'm not. Um, the dress is sort of this like satin sateen material, which transitions or translates very well into like semi-formal or something a little bit more... Um, fancy but the problem is if I wore this during the day um I'd have to constantly worry about whether or not this the length was appropriate so this is probably more of a nighttime look just because of the way it looks just because of the way it feels and I don't want to be uncomfortable during the day worrying about the length so this is definitely a nighttime semi-formal or formal dress look And we are back with the daytime look. I love this dress because it's just so much fun. It's just so much fun. Look at the little peplum bottom. Look at the way it moves. It's definitely made well to give me a lot of curve. Obviously, <laughs> it's... It's working well for me. I have no complaints. I love the length of this. I think that even though it's sleeveless and the material is a spandex slash cotton and it has a tinge of polyester, I think this would have no problem transitioning into night actually. So this is a day and a nighttime look and Lili Sadohi earrings. Love this stunner of a dress. I bought this from one of my good girlfriends. She has an online store. I will tag that information below. I think this dress is still available. I wore it two years ago to a wedding, but um, this is completely appropriate for a formal wedding during the spring or the summer. It's got this nice detailing. It's just like paneling. Um, it's not heavy, but it is a lot of dress. Um, so I don't have any shoes on right now because obviously I'm pretending we're in Cabo. So just go with it. Um, but it's got great sleeves. It's separated. Um, it it flows well. I love this dress. It's very comfortable. Lili Sadohi earrings. Yes, a shameless plug, but this totally works. Totally, totally works for formal. Uh, this is me skipping to my Lou, <laughs> like just minding my own business. I love, love, love. Like, I don't think I can stress that enough. I completely put this outfit together just now and you can see I'm a little frazzled because I'm just excited about the way it came up, um, or the way it came out rather. I love the sleeves. Um, I love the tulle skirt. Now, even though the tulle skirt and the sleeves both have volume, I typically would recommend somebody wear something that's more slimming at the top if the bottom is voluminous, but I love the way this works together. This is a new kind of take on a formal. It's not boring. It's not this like just regular dress. It's great. I love it. I'm still excited. I can't stop twirling. Um, this is another dress that I would recommend for a formal setting. It's got pockets, which every girl loves a good pocket on her dress. Um, it is a tool dress with app with floral applique and lace on it. This is a lot of dress, probably the heaviest of all of the ones that I've tried on, but for the amount of fabric, it has great movement. Um, I purchased this dress also from Ross, so I will tag the designer and see what I can find. But obviously, you know, those stores, they don't keep a very big inventory of the same exact things all the time, but definitely appropriate for a formal wedding. I totally love this. I don't even care anymore. I am twirling in and out of these outfits. The last four looks have brought me so much clothes joy. I can't. Let's talk about this dress real quick because I know it kind of looks like a fancy pajama dress, but it's anything but. Look at the genius in the way in which they gather these sleeves at the wrist. 
like this reminds me of those old school dresses like those gathering i mean but it just works here right i think it's a combination of the print i think it's a combination of the length this to me is appropriate for a daytime dress for a springtime dress obviously that's the theme of this whole video this is appropriate for a um, formal semi formal there's so many ways you can dress this up or dress this down I try to do that with the earrings and the belt but I can totally see the same dress with a solid colored belt and a over-the-knee boot like hello touchdown we're back and we're done and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope that you got some inspiration for what to wear to some weddings and what not to wear. Some of the outfits, like obviously the red skirt, no, the red dress, that was that was too much. You're not gonna wear that to a daytime and hopefully not a nighttime wedding if you're constantly pulling and tugging, right? Um, that's not gonna work for you. I thought that the white outfit, because it was wrinkled and all that stuff, would not work for like a casual garden wedding, but the more I was in the outfit, the more comfortable I got. Um, the palazzo not the palazzo the colorful maxi dress that kind of can be the most amazing pajama dress that you've ever seen it's not a pajama dress but it can double as one um hello completely love that and i don't know if you guys noticed but i continually tried to like show you that these earrings went with every single outfit that i had on total happenstance i'm not even that good of a planner like i'm a good planner but i'm not that good so one time for fashion and probably my ultimate 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 favorite look i want you guys to put what you think it is in the description box but i will go ahead and tell you dun, 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 was the pink tool skirt and the exaggerated sleeve tube top i mean come on <laughs> like hello that was perfection i actually did not plan to wear those two things together i wanted to i am sweaty that's okay, this is almost done, so I won't, you won't have to go through it that much longer. Anyway, um, I plan to wear that tube top with the exaggerated sleeve with a pair of black shorts to Cabo, but obviously you saw me messing with my carpet sand here because this is now my Cabo for the weekend. Um, and then I just had that tool skirt in there that I was gonna throw on with something else, and then when I put the two and two side by side, I was like, girl, you can get a little adventurous. So. That's what I did. Now, you have to wear that to a wedding where your bride is super comfortable with you being who you are. Obviously, I would not wear that to a place where I thought I would be overshadowing the bride or perhaps matching with the bridal party if they were either wearing tulle or they were either wearing pink. So in cases where I am deciding that I'm gonna go a little bit bold in um, what I am wearing, I definitely make sure that I reach out to the bride just to make sure it's comfortable. I'm not gonna be like, girl, I'm gonna wear this whole thing, but like, you know, how just up could I be? And if I'm getting the invite again, I probably know the bride or the groom, but I'll reach out to somebody in the wedding party and make sure that it is okay. Um, really quickly, one more time, just in case, I'm gonna look at my calendar. I can't trust my memory anymore, I'm getting old. Anyway, so consider when you are a wedding guest. Consider the dress code, consider the location, consider the bridal party's colors, and make sure you look at the invite. Consider the weather, consider layering, consider the time of day and your location. We already talked about that. Don't wear white unless it's specifically stated in the invite that you can. Do not wear jeans. And if you are going to wear jeans, don't wear rip jeans. Like, don't. You don't. No, just no, don't. Um, your undergarments, make sure you are wearing those. And if you are, no VPL. For everybody out there that doesn't know what that means, that is a visible panty line. Do not wear that. We don't want to see your undergarments. And if you're not going to wear any, don't make any false moves on the dance floor. You saw that? Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. It's not what we want you to do. Um, what else? Be gracious to your host. Um, for destination weddings, this is kind of a rule of thumb for my friends and I. Um, I typically don't give someone a gift for a destination wedding. My presence at that time will probably be the gift because obviously you're spending money to go there. Um, but you can pay for something towards like their honeymoon. A lot of people are not asking for gifts anymore. They're asking for people to contribute to like their wedding excursions. So if you do go out of the country or out of town, 
for a destination wedding i'm pretty comfortable in saying that the rule is you don't have to purchase an exorbitant gift um for the couple you can just give them something small so that's okay um let me see if i'm forgetting anything remember read the invite visit the website get to know much as much about the couple as you can they're spending all of this money on invitations they're spending all of this money on decor on flowers on just making sure that you are able to enjoy the day with them so while you are going and you are a guest and they want you to show up fabulously remember that at the end of the day this is about your friends your loved ones and you know be good so yeah coronavirus don't forget what i said you make sure that you're taking precautions you're listening to your federal and your local authorities you're washing your hands you are um, using your sanitizer you're being thoughtful of your neighbors and we are better about being better thank you guys for watching make sure you like click the subscribe button hit that bell notification so you know each time i drop a video and now that we're probably going to be quarantined it's still every Wednesday. <laughs> Bye!